and welcome to our Sabbath School. I'm Joanne. And my name is Yuri. Come together with us as we study lesson entitled Two Covenants, uh, lesson number seven on page 36. Before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be gathered here together to study the lessons that we have um, displayed to us today. We ask at this time to please be with us, send us the Holy Spirit, that we may fully understand and be able to explain this lesson, not only to others, but also to live according to the teachers. Help us to grow in your grace spiritually. Send us the whole, uh, your Holy Grace, that we may fully understand this and comprehend and live according to thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be studying um, about something really interesting uh, and possibly something that might be a little confusing to some people. So let's jump in and start by reading Hebrews 8.13. Sure, Hebrews 8.13 says there, In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and wax old is ready to vanish away. Thank you. So... Even that, kind of a little bit of a thinker, right? Because mm -hmm. it's talking about a new covenant and then the first is old. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different thoughts that are yes. being said here. But before we even jump into any of that, let's look at what does the word covenant mean? There's two covenants here. So let's understand what covenant is before we go any further. Where does someone could say a covenant is a form of agreement between two parties or two people? who sure. are maybe trying to reach a common goal or mm -hmm. a common um, quest that they're trying to achieve. It can be in a work, it can be marriage, for mm -hmm. the sake of marriage covenant. Sure. Um, so it's, you can see it's an agreement between two people, two mm -hmm. parties trying to reach a specific goal. Perfect, exactly. Yeah. It is an agreement. Um, so what exactly does the word agreement mean then if we're really trying to understand what's happening here? What does it say? What is, it? What is the definition of agreement? <laughs> well, I looked up the word uh, just so that we know what it means. And I thought the definition actually mm -hmm. was pretty poetic in nature as well. It's um, harmony or accordance in opinion or feelings or position or result of agreeing. So okay. you're, you're in harmony about mm -hmm. something, which means you're at peace with it, right? Yes. You're um, you're, there's no conflict in, in that mm -hmm. situation. There's no stress or distress. Um, and you have this common denominator here. You're agreeing upon something. And ultimately, that's kind of what we're trying to achieve right. as Christians in our life and um, in, our, in our life here. And what our ultimate goal Be in is... Be harmony. Be harmony with God and His, His law as we will study. Yes. And, uh, and that's with a, each that's other. Beautiful, yes. First, we need to, you know, make sure we can commune with each other. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a beautiful definition. Right. So ultimately, I think if we take anything else from this lesson, it is that simple ba bottom line. We're trying to be in harmony yes. with, as you said, with the law of God, mm -hmm. with um, being able to also have the law of God in our hearts and um, be able to obey the law, mm -hmm. be able to be in harmony with one another and ultimately reach that eternal life that we're all working towards. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so in order to achieve that, right, yes. there's something else that needs to come into play. Mm -hmm. So if you're in harmony with something, what you ha there has to be a base something, right, that right. you need to a agree standard, upon. A standard, a yes. A standard. Mm -hmm. So what is that standard that we're looking to agree upon? The standard we are talking about is God's eternal law, which, in other words, we know as the Ten Commandments or yes. the Decalogue. And this is the main, we know and we understand that this is the character of God. Mm. This is based on His love. And this is very important because even the two tables of stones that Christ wrote and later on Moses had to rewrite mm. was put inside the ark. Um, and why is that important? Because the, the tables of stone, the Ten Commandments, it, it's something that... Um, teaches us the way that we should live. Mm -hmm. And the work of salvation, we are able to reach salvation. And we will see here, both in both covenants, 
it was necessary to have perfect obedience. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can have the law, you can have the standard, but if you don't meet the standard, for example, when you're in school, when you don't yeah. meet the standard, what happens? You fail. You're dropped <laughs> out, you're, you fail. So this is, applies the same to the Ten Commandments, it's the same to us as mm -hmm. Christians. And um, this signifies that the law was, as we will see here in the first, um, the first sentence of the first paragraph, it says, The law of God enshrined within the ark was the great role of righteousness and judgment. So we know that we have this law here, mm -hmm. but as we will see throughout the lesson, we cannot keep it by ourselves. So that's, that's right. why um, God says there in Exodus 26, verse 34, it reads, And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony mm -hmm. in the most holy place, meaning that we are able to obey the law mm -hmm. based not merely on our righteousness, which we know it's nothing, it's right. filthy rags, but on upon the mercy seat that God has provided us, His grace. Right, and interesting, as you just said this word, something came to mind where you said, you know, it's called the tablets of testimony mm -hmm. or um, the um, ark, you know, um, with the testimony in it. Right. And the word testimony itself is kind of, it's like a witness, right? Yeah. You're witnessing something. You're showing something. Um, yeah. You're showing and you're establishing something uh, in a way that is visible right. to others. Right. And that should be our goal ultimately while we're living life and going through life is that are we able to witness to others that right. we are the followers of Christ by keeping um, his it's precepts, yes. right? Is it visible to others in our daily lives, in the way we interact with them, the way we speak to them, the way we conduct ourselves and take care mm -hmm. of ourselves and each other? Are we showing that we love Christ? Are we saying one thing and doing another? Or do we not even need our words to show to the world that we are a Christian? Especially with the close ones. Mm -hmm. Family, that's the hardest one. Yeah. Um, because of course you can say, oh, but you don't do that. Yeah. So why are you telling me to do this? <laughs> you know, or even sure. at church, it's a, it's a lot of stories we have of families that at church, maybe the husband or the wife or kids are totally different. Yeah. They're like the best Christians. But then when they come home and get in the car, it's like yeah. totally different, the mm -hmm. opposite. So we need to be very careful. And then like you said, it's a testimony, it's something that shows how are we you know, mm -hmm. with the standards, how are we meeting the standards? And we should yeah. be very concerned mm -hmm. when our actions, our thoughts, if we're meeting the standard. Yeah, and yeah. we are supposed to be a unique people, right? Set right. aside mm -hmm. for His yes. purpose. peculiar people. And we are, uh, you know, the words unique, peculiar, uh, set aside, like all of that, society sometimes tends to think of it in a negative connotation because you don't yeah. belong right everybody wants to belong and or have you're this, the weird one right yeah. you want to have this sense of belonging mm -hmm. um and so you can't be you have to be different just enough so you stand out but not too different that you are mm -hmm. too weird and don't fit in you want to be anybody. the outcast yeah. exactly mm -hmm. but here we're looking forward to being different mm -hmm. from the rest of the world it's why it's a good thing because that shows that we don't just conform to mm -hmm. the normal conventions of the world because we are supposed to be set aside for him, right? We are supposed to be showing to the world, we are a witness to the world about what Christ can do in our lives mm -hmm. and that he has already paid the price and the, yeah. the sacrifice for us in order to be able to have that hope and faith and belief and have something to look forward to in our lives. That it's not just all gloom and doom, right? Because a lot of yeah. uh, religions, that is what it is. Like if you don't follow or if you don't believe yeah. this and if you are not perfect to the letter. You will suffer. You will exactly. pass through all the difficulties. <laughs> And at the end of it, it's, I've seen recently um, a video where someone says, you know, to be a Christian is, it's a lot harder mm -hmm. because knowing, you know what you have to do. And if you say that living as a Christian life is easy, yeah. right there you're ready to line because we know it's not easy. So okay. it's, um, it's very hard, but Christ died for us on the cross. He gave us all the tools necessary. Sure. Yeah. Um, so there's, really no excuse except for our choices we make.
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and when you think about it, um, you said Christ already died for us and mm-hmm. all of that. So does that mean really we don't have to follow any of these um, these precepts that have been laid down? Or did, he, did all of that just go away when he died on the cross for us? If that was the case, mm-hmm. if he came to die on the cross to abolish the law, then his death will be worthless mm-hmm. because he came to fulfill the law. So if he comes to fulfill the law and if the law is abolished, it's pointless. Mm. The, the circle does not complete its, um, its goal. So Christ, he came to fulfill the law. As we f- read in Matthew 5, verse 17 there, it says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, Mm -hmm. one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So once when people say that Christ came and abolished the law mm-hmm. and that he died for our sins and because of his grace, we can live our life as we may think is fair for us right. and we don't have to worry about any consequences. That in itself is wrong. Mm-hmm. The, concept is, the concept is misunderstood there. As, as we talked about before, Christ came to fulfill. If that was the case that he came to abolish, then what's the point of Christ? And what's the point of salvation? What's the point of the Bible? What's the point of being unique? If he came to fulfill all that and abolish, then what? Then what it is life then for us, you know, as Christians? So it's it can be very um someone may say that because they want to maybe not accept mm-hmm. that they need to change, because we all know change is hard. Yes. We don't want to change. It's inconvenient for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something we're going to notice at the end of the lesson that inconvenience pays a lot mm-hmm. in the Christian life sure where does. we may not teach, as it tells us here, teach the laws, but to just maybe keep to ourselves mm-hmm. and, you know, because we don't want to suffer inconvenience yeah. or be put on a spot where you have to answer for, for, your, for your decisions. So That's right. Yeah. yeah. And talking about, you know, consequences and all of that you know there's actually something you know that because we're keeping the laws Mm -hmm. of God and all of that um, there's this obedience that can then result in Mm -hmm. happiness we we've heard this concept Mm -hmm. back and forth in different versions or variations of it um, either agreeing with it or disagreeing with it depending on which side you fall on Um, but how how exactly can you even uh, I guess harmonize this th- thought that if you obey, you're happy, and it's mm-hmm. not this restrictive thing that oh my goodness, I have all these rules and regulations that I need to follow. Well, if you ask a kid, right? If yeah. you ask a little kid, a five-year-old, let's yeah. say, if you tell them, if you obey your parents, are you going to be? Are you happy obeying? Mm-hmm. I was a kid myself. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we can say, yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, we're not happy like, at the moment. Mm-hmm. But the parents are not merely worried about if you're happy at the moment, yeah. or at least they shouldn't be, in my point of view. But they should be worried about the future, mm-hmm. you know. And we can be also applying the same concept to the law of God mm-hmm. in obeying His Ten Commandments. In that obedience to the law does not mean an easy life, as we talked about. Yeah. We're going to have troubles, mm-hmm. we're going to have um, issues, problems we're going to have to face. Um, yeah, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. We may not be happy at the moment, yeah. but what is the goal of the Christian? You know, it's happiness forever after yeah. in heaven with Christ. So we may suffer at this earth. We may, of course, we're going to have happy moments. Yeah. We're going to be happy in um, certain occasions where we know that Christ is with us and He blesses us and we're supposed to be happy in the blessings that He gives us. Mm-hmm. But it's not always going to be like that, as yeah. Christ also shared moments of sadness mm-hmm. in the Gethsemane when he was suffering. But it was for the better 
of the human race. Yeah. Maybe he was, he obviously, he was not happy at that moment. Yeah. But I'm very sure he's happy now that he fulfilled his promise. Yeah. So it's the same with us in obeying the law that, you know, we may not have an easy life, mm -hmm. but it's better for us. And, yeah. you know, sadness is, is looked upon as like this awful thing mm -hmm. that you can experience as a human, but it's also necessary for the fullness of life and the experience of life. Yeah. If you're, mm -hmm. if you have this happiness, okay, and, and go through a period of sadness, you come back to learning how to be happy again mm -hmm. and finding joy in the little things, just how much more sweet and, and beautiful is that once you've come out of your, your difficulty, yeah. you know, you're able yeah. to enjoy the fullness of all of that in the, the spectrum of emotions that mm -hmm. comes with being human. It's not just one thing. Um, yes, you know, generally we have this joy and happiness because we have a future, forward looking, future facing mm -hmm. religion, right? Where we're, we're hoping for this eternal life. Doesn't mean we can't be happy here, but it also doesn't mean that you're precluded from having difficulties, no. as you said, yeah. because it's all part of it. And facing yeah. and experiencing all of those emotions and all this uh, through the spectrum mm -hmm. is fine for us to feel and experience but also not just become overwhelmed by them. That right. is the key, right? Don't not right. letting it hold you down mm -hmm. in being able to experience the beauty of your relationship with Christ, not allowing these things to block you from your blessings that are in store for you. Right. Because I think we tend to do that sometimes because we either want that instant gratification that yeah. whatever Addictions, it, yeah. it could, could bring you, um, but we don't think about the future consequences yes. that it might hold. Uh, and I believe like we even talked about some of these things is that think like um, if you are somebody that's either suffering from like substance abuse or something mm -hmm. like that, you might not even think you have a substance abuse issue, right? You might think, yeah. well, I'm just a casual consumer of these things, be it alcohol or smoking or whatever drugs. Um, and you can say, not a problem for me. I can lose it in a day. I can, yeah. yeah. I yeah. and I only do it when I'm with friends, or I only do it in these social situations to fit in, or to, mm -hmm. or it makes me feel good, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, in that moment, you feel like you belong, right? In that moment, you feel like you're feeling the sense of happiness, the euphoria, yeah. whatever these substances might be providing you. But eventually, what ends up being the results of these things? affects your health, affects your mm -hmm. mental health, your emotional health, could possibly affect your social life as well. Basically. You may end up being lonely at the yeah, end of all. Exactly. So, you know, you yeah. might lose people based on your reactions to these things as well and how, what kind of person you become during it. Do you right. become violent or mean or whatever from it? So there are so many different consequences that can come from it. So if you think about it in the long run, is it not more beneficial for you to maybe abstain from a lot of these things, yes. avoid some mm -hmm. of the hard that could potentially come from it. And if we flip it to the other side, with the example you said about ch mm -hmm. child and the parent, you know, if a parent comes to a child who's really just wanting to eat all this candy, right? Just, I just want this, I need this. The sweetness I, sweet, of life. I want all these sweets. Yeah. Uh, parents are like, no, it's not good for you. This child is adamant. Are we not like that child? Oh, we're adamant. We yep. want this, right? You have to eat broccoli, uh, but yeah. it's going to be good. <laughs> so you're adamant about this. And the parents say, okay, fine. You know what? Have at it, eat all the sweets mm -hmm. that you want in the world. And what ends up happening when you overindulge? You end up with a tummy ache. You end yeah. up with an upset stomach and you have to deal with the consequences. Yeah. And as a parent, they were able to foresee the outcome ahead of time. So, and God and Christ, like they are able to see what is, you know, the next step and the step next after that, even before we even see it. And of so, they, you know, sometimes it's either answers um, to prayers that we've had or uh, prayers that we think are not being answered or all just ways that could potentially be of course, preventing us from a life of uh, yeah. heartache ahead. So I think we, we tend to have a really complicated relationship with the word happiness uh, today in society. Yeah, it's very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And I do like the verse that is found in Proverbs 6. Verse 23, it's very beautiful. It says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproof of instruction are the way of life. Yeah. So, as we humans, we need to have limits, you know. Um, there are limits in place, and 
If we yeah. follow those limits, just like the road laws, if we follow them, yeah. you get home safely. If not, we know what can happen. Mm -hmm. Same thing is for us in regards to the Ten Commandments in our life. Yeah. yeah. And here in the quote under the lesson, um, it also says, and upon obedience to these laws, the order and harmony of the nature or natural world depend. Mm -hmm. So the, the so there are great principles of righteousness to control the life of all intelligent beings and upon conformity to the principles, the well-being of the universe depends. Mm -hmm. Before this earth was called into being, God's law existed. Right. And that is something we need to keep in mind. There's all these laws of nature, right? You right. think about like gravity, mm -hmm. right? Like it just, you drop something it here, yeah. it will fall down. Yeah. You drop something maybe up in space, what's gonna happen? It's not going to, why? Lack of gravity, flow, yep. right? So there are certain things that are the way they are and the world functions properly mm -hmm. because the natural laws are being followed. We are the only beings who are like, you know what? I don't like this Maybe law. Not. Yeah. <laughs> I want I want to try something else. I want to see what else is out there. But you think about birds, they migrate down south in the winter. Right. Why? They know it's good for them to be somewhere warmer when the cold weather comes. If as a human, you might be like, well, let I'm me just, just see. Yeah, yeah see I don't happens. feel like going down yeah. south today. <laughs> um, maybe I'll just brave it through the winter. But uh, it's interesting to see that we were given that free will to decide, to that make that decision. And sometimes <laughs> it doesn't always, um, it doesn't always stick in our mind that, hey, Let's make the um, proper decisions that could help preserve mm -hmm. me in the long run. Yeah, which which you bring to an important point, which brings us to the next question. Yeah. Next question, which is, um, huh. you know, if we try to follow our ideas, our decisions, let me just stay here because it's, sure. it's cold, you know, I don't <laughs> want to move or inconvenience to change. Yeah. Um, but the question was posed to us, you know, after we have seen, mm -hmm. Um, are we by ourselves able to discern? Are we by ourselves able to obey God's moral law of the Ten Commandments? You know, it's mm -hmm. in our own power. You no. know, can we? It's, no. No. In our in ourselves, we're nothing, right? We're um, everything is filthy rags. Yeah. But yeah. Um, especially when we read Romans eight three and four, uh, it says, "For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh." God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after mm -hmm. the spirit. Right. So this, this is important. Um, if we look a little bit more under the, um, the second paragraph under the question B, mm -hmm. it says there, it was possible for Adam before the fall to form a righteous character by obedience to God's law. But he failed to do this, and because of his sin, our natures are fallen, and we cannot make ourselves righteous. Since we are sinful, unholy, we cannot perfectly obey the holy law. Mm. We have no righteousness of our own with which to meet the claims of the law of God. Mm. So, yeah. in short, we are not able to meet the yeah. standards of the law That's by ourselves right. because God himself we live through him he yeah. gives us the breath of life mm -hmm. that in itself brings us life and if we don't have that it's if we don't have life yeah. how are we going to keep the commandments that in itself already proves us that we are not capable to mm -hmm. keep the law of God right and yeah. the last sentence in that um, mm -hmm. note there it says the son of the highest has has strength to fight the battle for us and through him that loved us we may come off more than conquerors mm -hmm. and Amen. isn't that a beautiful promise yes. to have you don't have to fight alone you don't have to go through all of yeah. this alone and i think that is one of the biggest things that we face in this um, in this world and you know they they call it the the loneliness pandemic right across yeah. 
the world, um, even though we are more connected than ever in any period of history through mm -hmm. all the technology we have, people feel so alone. People feel so misunderstood. And yeah. we don't have to feel that way. We have someone that's fighting for us. We just need to reach out and accept it. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is also a struggle. We don't want to let go. That'll be hard, yeah. Yeah, we, we want to yeah. be in control all the time. And yet, we feel nothing is in our control, but there's yeah. someone who is in control. Oh, it's inconvenient for me to let somebody else take care of control, take yeah. control of my life. Because it may go in a direction yeah, I don't want I don't it to go. I don't want to do that. So, you know, it, yeah. it is inconvenient for us. And that's the whole, that's the whole battle, you know. It's, yeah. Do we let God take care of our life? Mm -hmm. Do we let him take the steering wheel? So. Yeah, but, you know, Continuing with that thought, you mm -hmm. have to let go. But in order to be able to let go and let God in mm -hmm. control, you do need something else. You need perfect obedience under this new covenant. Mm -hmm. We talked about all of this, like there's two covenants. Yes. And we're talking about this new covenant. So before mm -hmm. we get too into this topic of the new covenant, let's do a quick little refresher on like, what are these two covenants? And what is the new one that we're going mm -hmm. to be digging a little bit into? Right. So the, the, the old covenant, you can say, is the one where God understood that, you know, that, let's put it this way. The Israelites wanted to try their own way. Mm -hmm. So God said, okay, yeah. you can try it. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, made a covenant with them at the foot of Mount Sinai. And the new covenant is the one that... Christ knows that we're incapable, mm -hmm. so He came in our place, and He was the sacrifice, where the type met anti type, mm -hmm. and then we are able through Him, we are able to have perfect, uh, to obey perfectly God's mm -hmm. law. Is it through? It's because of Him, because we tried before with the old covenant, yeah, and what happened? We couldn't do it. We on couldn't our do own. it. It's yeah. impossible. We right. can't do it. So. God in His all wisdom um, knew, foresaw this, that this could happen. So sure. He prepared the new covenant for us. And uh, I'd just like to move on a little bit here, mm -hmm. where it's important for us to uh, understand that we cannot obey God's law if we don't have a change in us. Okay? That's right. So um, Christ needs to change our hearts. He, give us, he needs to give us, we need to accept a new heart He wants to give mm -hmm. us. We need to have a new birth. And um, I do like the, the verse that says in Romans 3, 31, it says, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Mm. So someone may read this and say, we establish the law. What do you yeah. mean we establish? We, are, we, have, we just read we have no power to follow the law. Mm -hmm. What does it mean establish? Yeah, so if you go mean? in Greek, mm -hmm. The word establish means to confirm. So let's apply that word to the verse again. Yeah. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we confirm the law. Hmm. So how do we confirm the law? Because we have the new heart in us, which is the one that Christ gave us, mm -hmm. the one which the law of God and His perfect righteousness is in our hearts, then with our actions, with our thoughts, we're able to confirm the law that way, confirm that the law is true, that way we are perfectly obeying mm -hmm. God's law. Yeah, and here in the note, uh, the third paragraph, it says, more than this, Christ changes the heart, mm -hmm. right? And that's what you were talking about yeah. um, as well. And, and it go, continues by saying, he abides in your heart by faith. Mm -hmm. That's the key word here, by yes. faith. And then you are to maintain this connection with Christ by faith and the continual surrender of your will to Him. And mm -hmm. so long as you do this, He will work in you to will and to do according to His good pleasure. Mm -hmm. So we heard the word repeatedly in this, by faith. By faith so that is yes. a key component in mm -hmm. our relationship with God in order for us to be able to maintain this new covenant um, mm -hmm. and have the law in our heart and produce this perfect obedience, we need to have this faith. 
And also, it's talking about continual surrender.、Mm -hmm. You need to continue to、um, give your will to Him and be able to, as the word also here is like, maintain the connection with Christ. That's the thing. You can't maintain something that、no. didn't exist.、Mm -hmm. So you need to establish this relationship, establish this connection. Um, and then you need to maintain towards it. And we've talked about this throughout. Anytime there's a lesson like this,、yes. is that it is just like any other relationship that you would have here、mm -hmm. on earth, right? With your friends, your family,、um, your significant other, would be you need to put effort into maintaining relationships. You need to, one, get to know that person better, right? In the beginning,、mm -hmm. you're trying to get to know each other really well.、Mm -hmm. And then beyond that point, you have to do things to. Continue that、Maintain. connection, right?、Yes. Continue talking to each other,、mm -hmm. meeting each other, doing things together,、um, and building this relationship. And it's a prolonged thing. You build upon it over a period of time.、Um, and sure, there might be people you have an instant connection with, but others also, over a period of time,、uh, through years, you might go through life experiences together, good times and bad times, and all of those strengthen your relationship.、Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. With our Christian life, be it good things that happen in life or bad things that happen in life, we need to lean on Him、mm -hmm. in order to have that faith that He will get us through the other side. And that builds upon it. So if you go through difficult times, you know, and you don't have that previous experience, you might have a little bit of that doubt like,、right. how am I ever going to get through this? But、mm -hmm. you go through it, you're like, actually, you know what? He got me out of this sticky situation before. I have faith. I am I'm confident. I'll、mm -hmm. get through this with the grace of God. And you mentioned something、um, that I want to read a little、uh, mm -hmm. paragraph here. There's not found in the lesson,、mm -hmm. but I want to、um, read it. It's very beautiful and specific that it talks about the new heart and how we may、um, keep、yeah. this going.、Uh, it's found in Great Controversy, page 468, paragraph 1, where it reads In the new birth, the heart is brought into harmony with God. As it is brought into accord with his law. When this mighty change has taken place in the sinner, he has passed from death unto life, from sin unto holiness, from transgression and rebellion to obedience and loyalty. The old life of alienation from God has ended. The new life of reconciliation, of faith and love has begun. Then the righteousness of the law. Will be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit.、Mm. And the language of the soul will be, like you mentioned before, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day.、Mm. So, what is the meditation? It's the constant thinking、yeah. about it. You're meditating upon it. You're, you're reading the word of God. You're, you're putting that into practice. You're putting that into your heart,、yeah. into the new heart. So, that's where we may be able to. Fulfill the,、mm -hmm. the perfect obedience to his law. Yeah, sure. And the last sentence in that、um, paragraph under 3a says, Then with Christ working in you,、mm -hmm. you will manifest the same spirit and do the same good works, works of righteousness and obedience. Obedience. Amen. That's beautiful. Yeah.、Um, you know, we may talk about keeping、uh -huh. the commandments,、sure. we talked about the covenants. But what is in store for us? What does God assure us that if we keep this new covenant, what is it that He assures to us? Well, here,、um, if we read Hebrews 8 10,、mm -hmm. it talks about, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law into your mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be with them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So,、mm -hmm. yes. we then see here the law is written in our hearts and our minds, and we are his people.、Mm -hmm. we, to be chosen by him, to be his, is a very beautiful and special thing, right?、Yes. If it's for anything, you're, you're the chosen person for somebody or some situation. It's special. Yeah, it's a very special thing.、Mm -hmm. and, and here, it's somebody who was willing to die for you. Think about that. Someone that was willing to die for you and you still don't have that in your heart to choose them. He calls you brother and sister,、yeah. as we studied in the previous lessons. That he calls us my brethren,、yeah. my, my sister, you know, my brother, because he went through the same thing that we go through here.、Yeah. 
And so his assurance that if we obey his covenant, his mm -hmm. commandments, that will be forever, you know, that will yes. be with, with God and will be his people. Well, and here in the note, it says, when the law of God is thus implanted in the soul mm -hmm. of the believer, he is approaching eternal life through the merits of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that is what we have to look forward to. That's what's in yeah. store for us. All you have to do is give your, your sinful heart to him mm -hmm. and you, you're getting a really good deal here. You think about it. You're giving something that's not so great, that might be broken and um, a little wrecked but you're getting something abundantly more, infinitely yep. more precious. You're getting eternal life and it's all through someone else's merit. And that's something that when you think about it logically, right? You're giving something used and broken. You're getting something way more valuable and you're, you have to give very less in, in return. And yet we still struggle to let go because of our ego and our pride or whatever, whatever's yeah. holding us back. Mm -hmm. But, if you just think about it very logically, it, it's it's a deal that you'll never ever find anywhere else. Yeah, I don't think, not to speak of other religions, mm -hmm. but I don't see one where it says that the main person that is focused on died for those yeah. believing in him. I don't see one that says that, you know, whoever the person was, the yeah. guy that is, gave his life to them and showed them the way to follow. It gave them uh, the Ten Commandments or gave them a, a set of rules yeah. that will guide you through life. So yes, to a certain point, they may give you the yeah. set of rules, but it doesn't provide salvation. You have to yeah. work on your own. It's always through your own merits. That's yeah. They don't you know. provide forgiveness of sin in the, in that way yes you know that it says here in the last sentence yeah the new covenant was established upon better promises mm -hmm. the promise of forgiveness of sins and of the grace of god to renew the heart and bring into harmony bring it into harmony with the principles of god's law so that's unmatched yeah that's unmatched that's a you beautiful that. promise to mm -hmm. have and i think this also having this hope and this faith in this of mm -hmm. this beautiful um thing that we have you know christ died for us and we have this right. thing to look forward to that also contributes to that happiness we were talking about in the previous day's lesson yeah. right yeah. if mm -hmm. you know you have something like this to look forward to yeah everything else is going to fall by the wayside. Sure, that isn't to say you won't feel sadness or depression or through the loss of loved ones or, you know, cer certain circumstances yeah. that life might throw at you. It's only human to feel that way. Right. But you won't feel despondent. You won't feel this utter hopelessness that a lot of people feel because there is something more as well. And we, and that again, isn't to say that you know, it's as simple as that. It yeah. is something we have to work on. And I think that's the part daily. that's really struggling for a lot of people is that work that you have to put in daily. It's really difficult to it's do hard. it on our own. Of course. And we talked about that uh -huh. time and time again. And it, you, if you go on your knees and you are able to really even just have that helpless conversation with him to say, Lord, I need help. I don't even know how I need help and in what way mm -hmm. I need help, but I just need help. Just lay it out. Yeah. Give it to him. Let it, let it go into his hands. Let him take care of it. Obviously, we do our part in praying mm -hmm. and give it to him. Let him take care of the rest. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful relationship to have because you think about it even in some of the other um, denominations or religious beliefs. You don't have that direct connection mm -hmm. to your savior. You always have to go through. You have to something. do something extra. You have exactly. to work like yeah. really hard. Really you can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, either through like sacrifices, right? You know, there's yeah. still some some faiths that do believe in actual sacrifices. There's some mm -hmm. that believe in like you need to give d this this big donations or whatever, right? You have to um, build upon it, and that's the only way. But we can go directly to him. We can talk to him and have this um, communion mm -hmm. with him. And you, as you called it, like meditate 
with him and i think having that direct connection is only because why we have you know this we have this whole faith and belief that the law is written in our hearts there was someone that paid the price for it but why why are we able to go directly and pray like this once once christ uh, went to heaven he sent us a comforter mm. he sent us the holy spirit and so if we uh, keep all this we learn up until now that we need to accept a new heart. Mm -hmm. We need to meditate on His law um, as much as we can all day. Yeah. Then the Holy Spirit would, would write that in our hearts. Mm -hmm. He would write that in our memory. And we would um, not only keep to ourselves, because once you love something, sure. what is it that happened automatically? You need to tell people, you need to tell, you people. Need to you tell, tell everybody. Without asking, without them asking, you're already sharing yeah. the good news. So if we have the righteousness of Christ, the, His law in our hearts, mm -hmm. as believers, as the Holy Spirit has written in our hearts, yes. then that will come automatically. Mm -hmm. um, just like to read here the um, sentence that is found right there under the, the, the paragraph under 4a. It says, the same law that was engraved upon the tables of stone is written by the Holy Spirit upon the tables of the heart. Instead of going about to establish our own righteousness, we accept the righteousness of Christ. So that's the mm -hmm. first step. Yep. Second step is His blood atones for our sins. Exactly. Third step, His obedience is accepted for us, mm -hmm. which He died from the cross for us, and His death, uh, we take His death as, as ours then the heart renewed by the Holy Spirit will bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. So, yeah. when is God's law written in the hearts of the believers? When we accept His righteousness, once we accept that Christ died for our sins on the cross, and we accept the Holy Spirit work in us, then God's law is written in our hearts. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, you put it very uh, beautifully in that it's, it's just like a step-by-step -step yeah. thing, mm -hmm. right? First step, um, establish... God's righteousness right. in our lives. Second step, um, that we recognize that His blood atones for our sins. Third step, obedience. Mm -hmm. um, and, we need that. and that is a result of the first two steps. Right. And then that then brings us to the final result, which is the fruits of the Spirit. And, um, you know, the fruits of the Spirit we see are really a reproduction of all of the other things having taken place Correct. already. Correct. Um, but in order for us to go through this, there's also in the Bible verse that you talked about, um, there's several things that takes place as well, mm -hmm. which is um, our, our, our lives, our daily lives, our ex life experiences um, that contribute to the fruits of the Spirit right. being resulted, which is um, we, we go through tribulations. Tribulations. It's mm -hmm. painful to experience those. Yes. However, going through those tribulations produces what? Patience. Patience. And don't we all need a lot of patience in our lives? Yep, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. And what happens when you have the patience? You get experience. experience. Mm -hmm. And that is something, you know, sometimes... Um, people get a lot of painful life experiences early in life, unfortunately, mm -hmm. due to yeah. um, difficult circumstances. But through with age and all of that comes this experience. But once you get that experience, what happens? You have hope. You have, hope. You have a hope that makes us not ashamed. And that hope is beautiful to have. You yes. are not ashamed of your faith. Mm -hmm. And in order to get to that point in your life, you have to have gone through some stuff to know that you have this unwavering faith that yes. I can proclaim that I am a child of God. I have this hope in my life that He will get me through any and everything yeah. that life throws at me. Mm -hmm. And so there, it's a step-by-step -step thing. It is not an easy thing. And never have we claimed that it is easy. Yes. It, the part that we have continued to say is simple is that it is as simple as accepting it right. and having that faith. But then in order for you to continue to work on it is a very sometimes painful experience depending on mm -hmm. what you're working with internally as well. Which brings to the next point, mm -hmm. which is found on question B, 
Um, they talked about the promises that are yes. provided to us under this new covenant. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how we have tribulations in life. Yeah. And I like to pinpoint on that because that is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, if we read there Hebrews 8 and verse 11, 12, just to have this base. Mm -hmm. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Mm -hmm. So here is the promise that His mercy yeah. will be um, given unto us, the righteousness, and our unrighteousness will be made righteous mm -hmm. um, because of His death on the cross for our sins, yeah. which He says that will be forgiven uh, and our iniquities will He remember no yeah. more. However, we need to have an understanding that His sacrifice on the cross does not merely mean that now I can live the life however I want. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because if that was the case, then what why, the why did He come the law for? Then? What is the, yeah. yeah, why is the law there? Why did He yeah. come to sacrifice right. for us? Mm -hmm. So, what I want to um, convey here to, to you all is that this new covenant of Christ's sacrifice does not allow us to live our life as we see fit. Right. Um, and that brings note to the tribulation that you mentioned, yeah. where we have troubles. Our lives as Christians is not easy. If we say it's easy, yeah. like we mentioned before, you're ready lying. You're ready. <laughs> you're lying to you're ready lying. You're ready not following the Ten Commandments. <laughs> so, with that understanding, we, we cannot lose focus that, yes, Christ died on the cross for us, He gave us His grace, but we still have to, by faith, yeah. try to keep His commandments, sure, yeah. not with our righteousness, by His righteousness. Yeah. And that can be attained by the sentence that is found there in the last, um, in the last sentence of the second paragraph on the 4b. Mm -hmm. It says, all who humble their hearts, confessing their sins, will find mercy and grace and assurance. Amen. So, that is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not to live life as, a, as I want to, yeah. as to enjoy the things that I want to. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, to um, having His law in your heart yeah. will then be able to show you the right way to do and mm -hmm. you will not be able to. If you really have the law of God in your heart, you will not try to fulfill your own desires. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, in the sentence right above that, mm -hmm. what you read, it says um, that it's all, you have to, like, forsaking evil mm -hmm. and choosing the good. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that can be a compass for us in yeah. how we go about life, right? You have to have that mm -hmm. humbleness uh, and um, confess your sins in your heart for you to then be able to discern how and what is the evil in your life mm -hmm. and how do you choose the good and what the good is in our lives as well. Because sometimes what is, what, what is something that may be perceived as good by the rest of the world might not necessarily be what's fruitful for you as a yeah. Christian. And yeah. you have to have that discernment. You, and in order for you to have that discernment, what do you have to do? You have to walk through life with yeah. all of the previous steps that we talked about, right? You have yeah. to have that experience, that life experience with Christ. Indeed. And it's yes. a continual thing. You might not be able to discern it from day one, but as you go about it year after year, day after day, you have, it's almost instinctive in you to be able to identify all of those things. Right. And that brings to the point where, you know, for us to keep that in mind is that uh, right there, the last paragraph says the conditions of salvation are ever the same. Mm -hmm. It never changed. Yeah. If once Christ died, it didn't change to, I don't need to do the, the Ten Commandments because yes. He died for me. It's always been the same. Mm -hmm. Life, eternal life, is for all who will obey God's law. Perfect obedience, revealing thought, word, and deed is as essential now as when the lawyer asked Christ, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Mm. And then we know that Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? Yeah. So we need to know what's the law. How readest thou? How do we understand the law? 
this do and thou shall live. So we right. need to have the complete understanding of God's uh, law, which is, we you know, his character, mm -hmm. which is love. Right. So, yes, it's, it's very important for us to keep this in mind. Absolutely. And as we continue on with the, with the lesson, um, there's something that's written regarding God's people and their, the third angel's message. And what exactly is there for us as God's people? Right. So from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, Christ, God wanted to have a people for him. And mm -hmm. if we read the extra reading, it's very beautiful. He puts there that God did not separate the people just for them to keep for themselves. Right. The point was that he would have a specific people mm -hmm. to show others what the way is and to show others what Christ's character is, what yeah. his law is. And so how does a people do that? Mm -hmm. And that is found in Revelation 12, 17, which is the, um, what it says there, that and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnants of her seed, which do what? Keep the commandments of God mm -hmm. and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. So we talked about before the testimony of Jesus Christ, how it's important for us to show to others the testimony. You, yeah. You're showing others what it is to be something. And so regarding the God's, uh, God's people on the, the third angel's message, which um, we have now, is that we are to keep his commandments. Yeah. And that's how we will distinguish those who are God's people mm -hmm. and those who are not. Yeah. yeah, and we talked about testimony at the very beginning of right. the lesson, right? right? And testimony is almost like to proclaim something, right. to mm -hmm. um, showcase something. And yes. that for us to be able to proclaim the love of Jesus in our lives every day is not only a blessing, but it's something that is um, a privilege for us to say that concretely, that we are his people, we're able right, with to, assurance. to, to mm -hmm. proclaim it for him to the world. And, and for us to also truly understand what we've been talking about, about this whole um, new covenant, the two covenants and all of that, is that there might be some confusion. Is, is there anything that's been changed about this? But we see here in the note under 5a very clearly says, under the new covenant, the mm -hmm. conditions by which eternal life may be gained are the same as under the old. Perfect, Perfect. Obedience. obedience. In the new and better covenant, Christ has fulfilled the law for the transgressors of law if they receive him by faith as a personal savior. Mm -hmm. And so we've Amen. been hearing the same words over and over again, right? Perfect obedience. We want, um, we want like love, harmony. But faith mm -hmm. has been one thing that's been popping up everywhere. Yes. And faith, honestly, is like the, the basic thing that we think about as when you think about any religious experience. But it is a foundational thing as well. Um, and when you think about having any of this happen without you having faith, it's no. impossible. It's, it's no. useless. Yeah. Right. And so um, that's something we need to continue to think about is that also the covenants, Nothing, nothing is really different. It's the, the conditions are all still the same. All the same. Yeah, never change. Exactly the same. God doesn't change. His law doesn't change. Yes. Therefore, the requirements don't change. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you know, that brings to the, the last part of the lesson, which is one that I feel um, really touched me yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. Because this is, this applies. We, we should study the lessons applying to ourselves, not, not to others. So this sure. is very important. And this is very important to me because um, if you read there, you know, we studied before the promises of the Old Covenant, what was, you know, promised to them who, mm -hmm. who would keep the commandments, that's what they would receive. Now, based on the promises of the New Covenant, um, who is really part of God's people in these last days, the question mm -hmm. puts. And uh, Isaiah 51, verse 7, it leads us very clear there. Do you mind if you could read sure. the verse 7 there? Yeah, Isaiah 51, 7. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Mm -hmm. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revealings. Okay, that is perfect. What do you say there? The people in whose heart is my law. And then it says, Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revealings or revilings. Mm -hmm. 
So what does that mean to us as Christians? If we read the, um, the first sentence there, which ties very perfectly with this, mm -hmm. and this is where the, you could say the reproach comes to us. It says, the great obstacle both to the acceptance and to the promulgation or the propagation or the, the letting know of the truth mm -hmm. is the fact that it involves inconvenience and reproach. So, being a Christian, mm -hmm. obviously, we may think, okay, Christ's life for me, I have an easy life as a Christian. Maybe here is not to say it's now, maybe. Mm -hmm. What about other countries? What about countries where it's shameful for you to be Christian or yeah. your family discards you from them because you're a Christian or you accepted the message? Mm -hmm. So, let's apply this to us then here, the, you know, to my life. How is the inconvenience for me? To, is it inconvenient for me to go and tell my neighbor when I talk to her, Christ loves you, mm -hmm. once she already talked about having bad experiences with Christians before? Mm. How inconvenient would it be for me? What, what do I say to her that, that'll make her uncomfortable or me myself would create yeah. a distance? Or we could say, for example, work-wise, it's yeah. inconvenient for somebody when accepts the message to maybe lose their job or try to talk to the manager, hey, I can't work on Sabbath yeah. because of this. And you may be reproached, you may lose your yeah. job. Mm -hmm. And that's very inconvenient when you're trying to survive and if you have a family to support. Mm -hmm. Or you could, say, you could say inconvenience in being Christian to your friends or to your family. It's inconvenient for us to, um, to change. We don't like change. Yeah. And so, um, it's it's very hard for us to accept that we need to face um, the hardships of life. Mm -hmm. um, the apostles suffered, um, Paul suffered, all yeah. of them suffered, Christ suffered. Mm -hmm. And so, do we want to have to live a Christian, Christian life yeah. without suffering? That's impossible. Yeah. And then, the sentence there continues reading, this is the only argument against the truth which its advocates have never been able to refute. But, this is a good note, but this does not deter the true followers of Christ. These do not wait for truth to become popular. Being convinced of their duty, they deliberately accept the cross. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I would just like to finish my thought with the, the last sentence here, the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. We should choose the right because it is right and leave consequences with God. To men of principle, faith, and daring, the world is indebted for its great reforms. By such men, the work of reform for this time must be carried forward. So, my, my thought is that, you know, we have difficulties, mm -hmm. we have troublous times, we may not, we may not have the easy life that is convenient for us. Yeah. Maybe our family is suffering or maybe whatever is going on. Maybe being a Christian is not easy at all. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Christ suffered, himself suffered. Yeah. So, um, the lesson for us is that under this new covenant, Christ gives us hope that um, we have in him sure. by his righteousness to fulfill the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. and to fulfill um, the promise that He gives us that He will give us eternal life. Yeah, amen. And, and I think that should be all our wish and prayer is that we can end up being those men and women of principle of who have unwavering faith and, um, and a beautiful relationship with mm -hmm. Christ to be able to then be able to testify yeah. that this is what Christ has to offer to us. You know, mm -hmm. be able to show that it can be a, a beautiful life experience as well. It is not just one of you being deprived of all of these wonderful, right. fun things mm -hmm. that you can do temporary in life, things, yeah. which are so temporary and fleeting. Mm -hmm. But we are working towards something more eternal and something more concrete. And so, if we can keep that as our focus and be anchored on that truth, then we will be able to live this life of of happiness yeah. in obedience. And I know that seems very contradictory to what the world believes as being able to just 
free will everything and live do whatever. life and have fun but yeah. there is beauty in that in happiness and obedience and and help us that we may be able to be these men and women that truly reform um, the message and be able to hasten christ's coming amen that's my wish and prayer amen amen well to conclude um let's pray Our Father, we're chart in heaven. We thank you for giving us this um, day to be able to study your lesson and truly dig deep into the two covenants and have this assurance that you have wonderful promises and blessings in store for us, for those that obey, those that have your law written in our hearts and that we may be able to outwardly show that we are truly children of Christ and that we may be able to also live a life that is able to uplift others and help and encourage others uh, in being able to reproduce their character in all our lives as well. Help us that we may be a beacon and a shining light and not a stumbling block to those around us. Help us to continue growing in your grace and refining and polishing our characters to be able to perfectly reproduce Christ's character and be able to um, take our wonderful characters to heaven as well. Help us all here today and those that are watching us today as well that they may be able to enjoy a um, beautiful experience and a walk with you daily. For all of these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today as we study these beautiful lessons. We invite you to join us again next week as we study the lesson titled The Old Covenant, Lesson 8. God bless.